Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, I would like to spend some time um, analyzing mathematics behind uh, frequency modulation. So basically I call this lecture frequency modulation equation. Um, it's a mathematical um, expression of how exactly um, the uh, modulated frequency modulated uh, signal looks like. This lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from this website. You have to go to Unizor.com. Then there is a course, Physics for Teens. Um, the uh, part uh, of the course which this lecture uh, is part of is called Waves. And uh, uh, among the waves there is a topic, Radio. So this lecture is part of that topic, Radio. Okay, um, now, why? Because um, every lecture has notes, very detailed notes on the website. So if you find it, let's say, on YouTube, you, you will not be able to read it. And notes are written as a textbook. Um, on the same website, you will have Mass for Teens prerequisite course, which contains all the maths which I'm using today and in many other lectures. Mass is absolutely uh, it is an absolute necessity for uh, people who study physics. Um, now there are many problems for those people who would like to um, take exams. They can actually take exams as many times as they want. Um, now there is a um, certain educational functionality in the website, which means if you are studying under somebody's supervision, then that somebody can enroll you in certain courses take uh, a look at your exams, etc. And uh, finally, the website is totally free. There are no ads, no strings attached. You don't even have to sign in if you don't want to this type of supervised um, studying. OK, back to uh, frequency modulation. Well, first of all, what do we try to accomplish by frequency modulation? Just as a reminder, there is an amplitude um, modulation. So if you have a high frequency carrier signal and uh, some kind of a sound wave, whatever sound wave is, and sound wave is basically the changes of the air pressure, and um, it, it has much uh, lower waving than uh, than the high frequency uh, signals, then we are changing the um, amplitude of the high frequency in sync with the way how the sound wave uh, signal goes, how the air pressure goes, which means the resulting would be higher um, uh, amplitude of oscillation in this case than lower here high here again, lower here again. So this new signal is an amplitude mo modulated signal which represents this particular curve of the sound wave, of the air pressure basically. Okay, so that's amplitude uh, and it's kind of easily understood. Frequency modulation is a little bit more obscure. Um, so again, let me tell what we want to do. For instance, this is a curve which represents the air pressure as a function of time. Now, how our high frequency modulation should look like if we would like to modulate frequency, not the amplitude. So the amplitude should remain exactly the same in the high frequency oscillation. But whenever the high pressure whenever there is a higher pressure, frequency must be um, greater, which means our curve should go tightly in this case. Now here we have a lower um, uh, air pressure and our oscillation should go with the same amplitude but a little bit less frequently. Then again we have high frequency here. And, low, and, and lower frequency here. So again, our um, it, it, if you can look at this as a, as a spring actually, now the spring would be tighter here 
and it will be as not as tight in, in cases of the low pressure. Again, tighter here, and the greater um, the uh, intensity of the sound, the greater the air pressure, the tighter should be these loops of the of the spring. So that's how it goes. Um, now that's the purpose. And today I would like to express this particular curve, how it looks mathematically, based on how this curve looks. The modulating signal is this one. This is a function of time. So, the function of time is a modulating signal. This is basically air pressure as a function of time at some particular um, point in space, let's say, where our microphone is. Because the microphone is converging this um, air pressure into electric signal, let's say a current in some circuit. And that current should somehow overlap with this current, which represents the current in the um, main carrier LC circuit. Remember, LC is inductor capacitor um, circuit which, which, os which produces oscillating uh, current. We spoke about this. So this is the main carrier circuit and it has certain main base frequency depending on L and C. Omega 0 is equal to 1 over square root of L comma C. So that's all we know. So there is something like a main frequency, the main LC circuit of a transmitter is supposed to, 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 to run on. Now, this modulating signal should change the main frequency. I mean, without the modulating um, signal, our uh, frequency, whatever we are transmitting, should look uh, uniformly with the same um, uh, angular frequency. This is angular frequency um, uh, all the time as a function of time. So it basically would be So this would be the main signal. So it's a sinusoidal signal, constant amplitude, constant frequency, without any modulation. My purpose is, now, and this is function of time, obviously. This is unmodulating signals, unmodulating oscillations of this um, uh, circuit. Now, my purpose right now to come up with another formula which basically gives me the modulating um, oscillation, modulated oscillations of this main uh, circuit. So, the frequency should be changed based on modulating signal. So, how this particular new formula, mathematical formula, would look like, which represents the uh, function of um, current in the uh, LC circuit based on time and modulating signal. So, again, all I know is that with a higher modulating signal I have to have higher frequency. The question is how can I represent it in formula. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, before everything I would like to step aside a little bit and talk about frequency. Um, I, I know some people have a little problem with uh, understanding this concept as far as the frequency is concerned because there is some differentiation, integration involved, etc. So what is frequency? Now we used to think about frequency as either just 
regular frequency or angular frequency. Now, regular frequency F is number of cycles per time. So if you have something which is just oscillating, which we are saying like five oscillations per second, it means that every second there are five full circles um, uh, of uh, oscillation. Every two seconds we have ten. Every twenty seconds we have a hundred. Now, um, that's regular frequency. Now, when we're talking about um, frequency, we very often we express our function as this type of equation. And, and whenever we are talking about um, full cycle, so the frequency is how many cycles per how many seconds, or can we, how many cycles per second, actually. Um, we are talking about a period of the function um, cosine. So the full period, and the function looks like this. So full period is, let's say, from here to here, or from here to here, whatever, doesn't really matter. So how many full periods uh, per second this particular function makes? That's the regular frequency. Now, we know that this function has period 2 pi. Now, every um, period uh, of the uh, function cosine has length 2 pi. Now, what's the period of this function? Well, the period of this function is 2 pi divided by omega, nulu, omega 0. That's the period. Now, this 2 pi comes out as kind of an inconvenience. And uh, what people actually did they were considering this type of function as a representation of certain mechanical movement. Now, what's the mechanical movement? If you have a circle, if you have a circle, and you imagine your point here. And let's say this circle has a radius A. So this point is at uh, x coordinate A. And then it starts moving, uniformly moving. Now, what is its x coordinate? Well, if the radius is A, the x coordinate is A times cosine of this angle. This angle if considered as a function of time uh, is basically the argument to cosine. And if our movement is uniform, now uniform movement means that phi of t, the angle of rotation is equal to some kind of a constant by time. This is a uniform um, uh, rotation. Now, in this particular case, for the uniform rotation, we see that our x-coordinate is exactly what we, what we actually have to have. So, let's talk about oscillations as a result, basically, of some kind of a point uniformly rotating, um, as, as I was just describing, on a radius A with a frequency, um, with a speed, actually. Now it's angular speed, you see? Uh, there is a very direct analogy between the distance and speed in kinematics 
and uh, this angle of uh, rotation and uh, so-called angular frequency, this coefficient is called angular frequency basically, um, uh, in this electronic, radio, etc., uh, kind of a physics type of things. It's a direct analogy. So this is the distance, this is a uniform constant speed, this is time. So speed times um, time would equal to distance. That's in, in, in this particular case, the distance is measured as, a, as an angle in radians. And that's why whenever we have a full circle, we have 2 pi radians, right? Uh, radian, 2 pi radian. And uh, that's why the period of function, cosine in this particular case, is equal to 2 pi. All right. Now, if the period is, if, if, the, uh, if um, the point is uh, rotating faster, if this is faster, the period will be uh, uh, proportionally smaller, right? So, if the regular cosine of uh, t has the period 2 pi, then if I multiply the speed of rotation by a uh, factor uh, omega zero, my period would be reduced, obviously. So, whenever we are talking about this equation as representing, let's say, radio waves, we definitely can model it as a rotation of a point around a circle of radius A with a speed, I'm using the word speed, actually it's angular speed, omega zero radians per second. So, there is a direct analogy between kinematics, um, distance and speed terminology, and this radio electronics when we are talking about uh, angular frequency and amplitude. Now, if there is a direct analogy, let's just uh, push this analogy a little bit further. So, we obviously know this. Now, this is good because for uniform um, rotation it, 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 it works and it fits perfectly. Now, we know, again, back to kinematics, that distance can actually be the result of uh, multiplication of speed by time for uniform movement along the straight line with a constant speed. But again, um, a little further in studying uh, the mechanics, we were actually studying something like accelerated movement or in theory any kind of a movement with variable speed. And what is speed if you consider that you know the distance as a function of time? Well, let's go back to our mechanics actually. And the first derivative of the distance by time is actually um, a speed as a function of time. This is a momentary speed, speed at any particular moment of time t. Now why is it derivative? Because obviously if you take some kind of a moment of time t and then the next moment of time t plus a little increment, you can consider that during this very little time interval the speed is not actually changing. and. Uh, your speed can be considered during the whole interval as being equal to v of t, the speed at this particular moment, because these are very, very close to each other moments. And now, at the same time, we know that function of time, function distance of time, at this particular moment, at t plus uh, delta t, has value t plus delta t. And the previous moment, distance was like this, 
So this is increment of the distance. And if you will divide it by time, which passed from one moment to another, you will have an average speed during this very small amount of time. And whenever we will reduce the amount of time, this inc time increment, we will make these two events very, very close to each other. So this will be smaller and smaller, and this will be smaller and smaller. And in the limit, we will have something which is called the first derivative. And that's why this is goes to v of t as delta t goes to zero. So that's why this formula. OK, which implies that if our rotation is not uniform, but has a changing um, frequency, we have absolutely analogous relationship between angle of rotation and instantaneous first derivative of angle of rotation is instantaneous angular speed. Exactly the same. So for uniform movement, yes, if this is a function, the first derivative of this function is omega uh, zero. This is a simple linear function. And that's uniform movement. But if the movement is not uniform, if our point is moving faster at one particular um, time and then slower and then faster and then slower, etc., then the uh, instantaneous angular um, uh, frequency is actually instantaneous angular speed. It's just a tradition that radio engineers are calling it frequency. It's basically angular speed. Angular speed depends on angular rotation and angle of rotation in this particular fashion, in exactly the same fashion as distance and speed are related to each other. Because angle of rotation is actually angular distance, and the angular speed is basically how fast we are moving. This is a very important to understand. Now, and this is a very simple concept, which is actually no different than kinematics uh, concept of uh, distance and, and, and speed in case of non-uniform um, movement. So, this is the same. This and this are the same. OK, great. Now, from the terminological standpoint, angle of rotation is called a phase. And again, it should not be understood in any different way than just an angle of rotation. So what's the phase of some particular oscillation? Well, if oscillation is uh, uniform, then it's basically an angle by which the point managed to turn during certain time t. So in this particular case, if the point is here, then this is an angle. So phase is a function of time, which represent basically the angle by which the uh, point managed to, to, to turn during the time t. So phase is a function of time. Phase is angle of rotation by the time from 0 to, to some time t. That's what phase actually is. And again, it should not be understood in any other sense, but just the angular distance by which our point managed to turn. And as usually, x-coordinate of the point we are considering as our main um, uh, variable which we are studying. We are always studying the x-coordinate of the point. And the point is rotating around this particular, on the radius, on the radius A in this particular case. Now, if we know this, we know from angle of rotation, we know how to determine um, the instantaneous 
speed of rotation or angular frequency if you will, if you would like so angular frequency angular frequency this is our omega of t so these are basically radioelectronic kind of terminology. The angle of rotation and angular speed are more mechanical, so to speak, um, language. But they mean exactly the same, and the relationship should be exactly the same. The same relationship as between distance and speed we have between phase and angular frequency. Now, there is a small um, maybe misunderstanding, because sometimes the word frequency is um, is used in in angular sense, and sometimes in the sense of how many um, periods per second. Now, number of periods per second. Well, if the period is actually two pi divided by omega, then the frequency is equal to how many um, periods per seconds. Now, each period each period is is this. So frequency is equal to basically omega um, divided by 2 pi, which is basically 1 over t. So this is, um, sometimes people are uh, mixing th this frequency with this frequency. Now this frequency is number of periods per second. This is uh, number of radians per second. And since each radian is uh, each period is 2 pi radians, that's why we have this relationship. And sometimes in formulas you have omega, but sometimes instead of omega you have 2, two pi f, uh, f, 2 pi f, instead of omega. Formulas are exactly the same. It's just what exactly we are talking about frequency, frequency in number of periods per second, or uh, period uh, or number of uh, radians per seconds. It's just two different scales, but they mean absolutely the, absolutely the same, and the difference is in this multiplier 2 pi. Now, I will use omega because it's just well, simpler. It's just you don't have to you don't have to write 2 pi. Okay, so and there is one more very important piece about frequency angular frequency. When, I, when I'm saying frequency, it means angular frequency. From this, and from very simple mathematics, you know if there is a function and there is a first derivative of this function. Well, from function we can get first derivative. Can we get fir from first derivative, can we get the main function? Well, very simple. Well, in pure mathematics, it's supposed to be minus infinity instead of zero. Um, in physics, we don't deal with minus infinity. We're talking about movement. So the amount, uh, um, the angle of rotation by the time t is basically integral. Integral is a reverse of uh, differentiation. So this is differentiation. This is integration. And that would give me angle of rotation from moment of time t0 to moment of time t. Well, I shouldn't use the letter t in both cases because that's kind of confusing. Let's just use Greek letter tau. It's just a variable of integration, doesn't really matter. So this is a, an elementary mass which you kind of must know and that's why there is a mass for teens course, prerequisite course, um, on the same website. So, how to do the differentiation and how to do integration should be of no problem. Uh, in elementary cases, I'm not talking about some um, high complexity things. So, so far this is sufficient for us to talk about uh, frequency modulation. And here is how. Now, whenever we are talking about frequency modulation, we are talking about not a constant frequency. It's not omega zero, but it will be frequency which depends on time. That's very important because sometimes when my modulation, uh, modulating signal is 
um, stronger, I have to have higher frequency. Whenever it's weaker, I have to have a lower frequency. So basically, what I would like to talk about is a modulated modulated frequency. This modulated frequency obviously should depend on main frequency of um, uh, of our circuit which produces main base frequency on which basically our transmitter is transmitting signal plus something which depends on the strength of the modulating signal. So if my modulating signal is some kind of a function of T, I have to add this component. Usually it's added with some kind of a multiplier, lambda, called uh, modulating index. This is a contribution. This index actually um, kind of controls the contribution of the input signal to frequency. And basically that's it. I mean, that's how our frequency modulation is done. We are adding to the main frequency um, on which this particular transmitter is tuned in. We are adding something which depends on the modulating signal. So this is the sound, let's say. Now, <coughs> it has certain limits of strength. Now, our uh, width of the band around this particular frequency should be obviously restricted because there are some other transmitters which would like to also transmit some information. So for each um, transmitting radio station we give the certain band of frequencies and we were talking about this. Uh, for FM radio it's from uh, 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz divided uh, into 100 pieces and within each 100 we will have the central we have some kind of central frequency and frequency around it to compensate this particular thing. So we should use the mod uh, um, um, modulating index to narrow down this particular thing. So, what happens now is basically pure mathematics, which you definitely um, are familiar from whatever I was talking before. If you know this, how can you recreate our main uh, equation? Well, again, let's go back to main equation. We started with, with this, unmodulating signal. Now we would like to, uh, to have the modulated signal. Now, our um, current in the LC circuit is A cosine. Now, instead of this, I will use phi of t, right? In uniform case, angular speed times t is angle of rotation. In a non-uniform, we have a different speed, but we can recreate this thing very simply. Modulated angle of rotation as a function of t is integral of from 1 of t um, Omega modulated as a function of tau. Let's use a different letter. D tau. This is a derivative. This is the angle of rotation, angular distance. So this is angular speed, angular distance. And the distance can be derived from speed using simple integration. So, let's use this here, and what do we see now? You see the phi 
modulated at t is equal to integral from 0 to t. Um, omega 0 plus lambda uh, modulating signal of tau. Sorry about that again. d tau equals Well, if you multiply this by this, you will have one component, which is this, plus another component, which is lambda goes outside, m tau d tau, which is equal to, now this is a simple integral, which is omega times t, and this is as it is. I don't want to do anything about this from which I, so the current modulated as a function of t is equal to A cosine modulated f, which is omega t plus lambda integral from 0 to t, m of tau d tau. That's the final formula of modulated signal. And what I did in the notes for this lecture, I had an example. I had a uh, function m of tau as um, sum of, I don't remember the numbers, but it's something like, I don't know, 3 times cosine 2t plus uh, cosine t or something like this. I took this as m of t as a combination of two different oscillations. Maybe there are two musical instruments. One is playing one note, another is playing another note. One is, uh, let's say, louder, another is uh, softer. This is uh, producing higher pitch, and this is lower pitch. So it's like an orchestra from two different instruments. Whatever it is, doesn't really matter. I could, I could take any function here. It doesn't really matter whether it's trigonometric or not trigonometric. It's just usually when we are talking about sound, we have a combination of many different harmonic oscillations and not so harmonic, but in any case, some kind of oscillations. So that's why I took this as m of tau. This is m. And then I basically integrated, um, I mean, it's easy to integrate cosine, you know, the mm, uh, derivative of sine is a cosine, integral of, uh, 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 integral of cosine is a sine, and the derivative of sine is cosine, so it's very easy to integrate. Um, so, and I came up with a formula and draw the graph. So, the graph of m of t. So I draw this graph and this graph. And it appears actually exactly, if this is the sound, my uh, frequency was uh, much more intense here and much less intense here. Then more intense here and less intense. And the amplitude was the same. So I had these two graphs presented in notes for this lecture. Uh, and uh, you can take a look at this. Well, that's it. My purpose was to come up with this formula and draw a particular example how exactly this uh, frequency modulation actually looks like. Now, um, in my example, as a base frequency, I did not use a very high frequency because otherwise my graph would not be really easily decipherable uh, when it's too high frequency. You don't really see the difference in frequencies if it's really too high. So I had exactly the number where you see that sometimes it's rarer and sometimes it's more frequent uh, waves of the, of the resulting graph. In theory, this frequency is significantly greater and um, it allows to, you, you see, this is frequency, it's from 88 megahertz, so it's 88 
millions of oscillations per second. That's high. Um, okay, so uh, it allows to accommodate any kind of a uh, sound, even hi-fi. Um, so little um, deviations maybe from some smoothness, which basically represents some um, uh, particularity of, of the sound, can be accommodated using a very high frequency as long as we basically know how to produce this signal and how to receive it and convert back frequency um, oscillation, frequency modulation into some kind of a sound on the receiver side. And, and basically, I, I don't know all the details, but uh, as far as I know, this frequency modulated signal, after it's received, is converted somehow into amplitude changes because eventually we have to really produce the sound uh, through some kind of a speaker and that's why we need the amplitude um, so there is some kind of a conversion but that's beyond the scope of this particular course it's uh, more for radio engineers so whenever if, if you will be a specialist in this particular area you will um, uh, know exactly how it's done how to, to transmit this signal and how to receive it on the receiver side. Okay, that's it. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture and uh, including the graph which is presented there. You can actually click on the right button on the graph and open it up in a new tab on your browser so it will be bigger and much more decipherable. Well, that's it. Um, thank you very much and good luck.